Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Author Eke. Today, I've got Dana Hammer, and she is a novelist, a screenwriter. Uh, what else here you've done? Uh, screenplays. And you have you have quite the resume just from what I'm reading right here that you probably didn't even elaborate of <laughs> really uh, your multitude of talents. But uh, I'm glad you could join us today. So introduce yourself and you know, talk about what you've done, your books, and we'll kind of take it from there. Sure. Um, like you said, I'm Dana Hammer. I do uh, stage plays, screenplays, novels, and short stories. So a lot of different kinds of writing. Mm -hmm. um, right now, I've got a couple of novels out. Uh, I've got an adult horror novel called The Cannibal's Guide to Fasting. Um, a middle grade fantasy book called My Best Friend Athena. Mm -hmm. And the sequel to that is coming out this year. Um, and that's called Fanny Fitzpatrick and the Brother Problem. Ah, so is there going to be one after that? Is it yes. like a, a series of, uh, of books that carry on? Yeah, I just signed a contract with the third one, and I'm working on that. So Excellent, excellent, excellent. So you have done – what do you like doing the best? Now, do you like screenwriting, screenplays, books, novelettes? What do you like to, what do, you like to Honestly, do the best? Honestly, like it, it's such a cop-out answer, but I love them all just in different ways. Okay. Um, I think that uh, I'm a very dialogue heavy writer. That's kind of where, that's where I shine. So Me too. for that reason, stage plays and screenplays are nice. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes, you know, when you really want that interiority, when you really want to get into someone's head, you, you kind of have to go with a novel or a short story. So, right, right. So where'd you start? Did you start with uh, by writing a, a, like short stories or how did you get your start writing and what made you want to be able to do that with just a creative right. idea. You said, I'm going to get it on paper or how, how did you, what's the kind of the start of that? Um, you know, I've always written little things. I think when I was um, even a little kid, I wrote little short stories. Uh, I think the first thing I ever wrote was, this is really weird, but I, I did a, a stage adaptation of the, the rock opera Tommy by the who, I don't know if oh, you're wow, ever, nice. you're <laughs> I don't know if you're familiar with that movie, but it's super yes. weird. And like, it was a strange choice for a little girl to, mm -hmm. Make into oh, yeah. play, uh, but I did. Um, so I've always were you a pinball things. wizard? I was. I didn't act in it. I, I <laughs> no, but I, did you I, play I, the pinball? Did you play pinball at all when you were? I a kid? did. I oh. actually, my dad had a Rolling Stones pinball machine oh, that's in awesome. the house, and so it was fantastic. Yeah, oh, yeah, excellent. So that's where you got your start, huh? Yep. By uh, the Who, they, yeah. you know, they they have they're accredited with having like I think the loudest concert ever. Oh, really? Yeah, I think how, because their their music is so loud. I think I think so. And that's back I think in maybe in Germany when they did it back in the late seventies or early eighties. But I think they're credited with having the loudest concert, huh. uh, decibel level. But that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, you know, something I just picked up along the way. Yeah. So, so how long does it take you typically to write uh, a novel? Um. It kind of depends. I think uh, with The Cannibal's Guide to Fasting, it wound up taking me a long time because I wrote the first draft and then I didn't like it. And so I mm -hmm. set it aside for, I think it was just sitting on my computer for like two years. And then finally, I think during the pandemic, I was like, I'm just going to fix it. And so right. I took it out and rewrote it. So if you count from start to finish, I think that took me like three years. But okay. I think actual writing time was probably more like six months. Okay. Um. With my best friend Athena, my middle grade book, um, mm -hmm. obviously it's consider it's considerably shorter than a full length novel. So I think that mm -hmm. took me just like maybe a couple of weeks. Oh wow, that's impressive. Yeah, I mean editing obviously took longer, yes. but just to get the first draft down, yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you do you have a, a certain time you like to write, like in the morning, or do you have a ritual, or you you got to be in a sterile environment, or you know, what's kind of your your way you do that? Well, I like to write. Um, alone and when it's quiet. Mm -hmm. So pretty much I have to write when my daughter's at school um, or at night when she's in bed. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like uh, morning time's nice for me because I can have my cup of tea, just sit and type nicely. Um, I think at nighttime I like to write, but sometimes I get a little punchy, a little tired and things come yeah, out a yeah. little funky. But yep. Yeah. Yep. I get that. I, I like to listen to music. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So Does I can distract you. Be no. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Not really. I don't think so. That may be dead, but I don't, I don't think so. So you, uh, you got a daughter. Does she like, like, does she like your books? I mean, does she, is she old enough to read them and, and yeah. everything or? 
most of the stuff I write is pretty adult, so she hasn't mm-hmm. read it. Um, she has okay. read My Best Friend Athena. Um, honestly, though, she prefers like Diary of a Wimpy Kid and like all those okay. like other kinds of series or whatever. But uh, but yeah, she likes it fine. So oh, excellent, excellent. <laughs> so who's your publisher? Uh, Cinnabar Moth. Okay, all right. Uh, I've heard of those guys. So you're you're with them. You've got so you have a cover of your book and you show your book or anything. Do you have oh, that? um. Yes, let me grab it. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> that way folks can go on Amazon and see what they're uh what they're looking for. Visual guy. So they grab her books, folks. But I think that's important to uh show the wares. There All we right. go. No, 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 no sweat. All right, so this is my best friend Athena. It's my middle excellent. grade book. Yeah. Excellent. So it's about... I like, I like uh, the uh, child in the wheelchair because uh, I am a monitor on a special education program bus. Oh, yeah? So, yeah, I love, love the, uh, helping them out and, and helping the little kids. And uh, so uh, that's very... Uh, I like that. The she's a cool uh, character. She's a... Character, kid. Parents have some kind of uh, mysterious job that we don't know about, but they have bodyguards and they travel around the world and... She's got some interesting hobbies. She likes taxidermy. She's got some. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, she's got some real dark interests. <laughs> Gemma's a cool, her name is Gemma. She's a cool character. Excellent. So, yeah, so talk about the book. Let's talk about you, all of them, one of them, or just start and just kind of talk about the book so, okay. and, uh, and everything. So, this one, the one I just showed, my best friend Athena, that's mm-hmm. about an 11 year old girl named Fanny Fitzpatrick. And her best friend is named Athena. And she is. Like the queen of everything. She's just too perfect, super smart, super pretty, mm-hmm. good at everything. And Fanny loves her, but sometimes she's a little bit jealous. Mm-hmm. Um, but then it turns out that she that her best friend Athena is actually the reincarnation of the goddess Athena. I was going to ask you if it had anything yeah. <laughs> back to the goddess Athena. Yeah. So she, um, she accidentally turns the school bully into a cockroach. And Good. so now she needs Fanny's <laughs> help to find the cockroach and turn him back into a boy. Ah, interesting. Interesting. Very so cool. It's really so, about like friendship and, and feminism and girls supporting each other. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it's a fun, it's, it's comedy. It's fantasy. It, it's a fun read. Well, it's great. They turned the uh, bully into a cockroach. I mean, yeah. uh, I probably would have done worse. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. If there's something worse than a cockroach, I might have done that. So uh, yeah, it's it's, it's a good, good punishment, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> so uh, great. So do do you? So what's the next the books? Before, now, what's the next one kind of kind of be about? Since it's uh, so, kind of serious. Um, yeah, that one's Fanny Fitzpatrick and the brother problem. So uh, Athena's brother shows up, and he is named Dion, and he's the reincarnation of Dionysus. So he's the god of, uh, you know, wine and partying and drunkenness and all that stuff. And he had a wine business. I think I met him in the army. Yeah, yeah, you probably did. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But he lost his business because uh, some bee pollen got into the wine and a bunch of people had anaphylactic shock. So now he's living in Athena's house, crashing on the couch. And he's, you know, he's depressed and he's You've got a little dark side of you. you got a little dark side. Yeah, a little bit. (laughs) I never even thought of that. What honey and a wine and an epileptic shot? Interesting. Well, if you're Very stomping grapes outside, sometimes a bee might get in there. You know. Hey, that's right. Then you may not feel it. That's right. <laughs> Lucille Ball didn't feel it when she was stomping all those grapes. So, uh, <laughs> so keep on. I'm sorry, I didn't want to interrupt. Oh no. Um, so basically, he winds up being a very bad influence on the girls um, because you know all he wants to do is have fun and throw parties and eat and. He decides that he wants to um, get some money back by winning an ice cream eating competition. Mm -hmm. And so he like starts training and like eating huge quantities of everything. And um, it's kind of up to Fanny to save the day and rein her friends in and be like, hey, we can't be skipping school to eat ice cream, that kind of stuff. Oh, excellent. Excellent. And you already got the third one in mind? Kind of simmering a little bit? Yeah, I'm working on that one. And that's... um, Fanny wants to be a singer more than anything. Like she has a really beautiful voice. Mm -hmm. Um, And now she's being recruited by some sirens to uh, join them on their Mm -hmm. island and be trained to be a siren. 
Ah. But Athena and her family are like, no, you don't want to get involved with them. They're mm-hmm. dangerous. They kill people. But Fanny's like, but I want to be a singer and go live on an island. So, right. Yeah. So ah. there's some conflict there. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So when so do you write you write screenplays different than you do the novel, of course. But you like you like writing a lot of dialogue. Yes. Uh, and my, typically, my books have a lot of dialogue because there's a lot of interaction back and forth with characters and uh, and everything. And I do like that. Do you have a hard time? Do you outline, or do you just I, pants it? I do outline, but they're very loose, and mm-hmm. I'm not really married to them. I just kind of right. have like lists of how I kind of want things to go, but I mm-hmm. rarely stick to them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, do, yeah. Do you uh, write por- like from front? from the beginning to the end, or can you write beginning a little bit of the end, a little bit of the middle and put them together? Or is it just very linear how you're, how you write? Very linear. I honestly don't know how writers do it out of order. Like I would not be able to do that at all. It mm-hmm. sounds confusing and nightmarish. It is. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way that I write uh, all over the place. Then I got to line them all up. Right. And make sure that everything yeah. kind of timeline perspective and, and does that. So, yeah. Do you ever get scenes mixed up that way, though? Like, do you forget <laughs> things and maybe things, the continuity gets broken up or like. No. Some, uh, what I do is um, I use like a mind map program. So if I say that somebody does something, I'll go back and make sure that I address it to either, you know, carry it out or you know, or something in the book to make sure because. I mean, because there's people out there, they'll read it and go, oh, they were supposed to do this, but they didn't do it ever in the book. So what happened? Yeah. Right? Uh, so, yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll kind of mind map it out or I'll read it. I go, oh, what did I, what did I say earlier to make sure that I'm, I'm going back and forth? But it, it, it can be, uh, I'm, I'm becoming more of a, because um, I've only been writing for about a year and a half. Oh. So I'm, I'm, I'm starting to be more of a, okay, let me plan this out a little bit you know instead of just because you yeah. want everything kind of to line up and everything so you got any are you going to write anything else you got any anything else you want to write up not just from the series but either like uh, if you didn't write what you write right now what kind of books would you like to write history nonfiction. what would that what would you really research of that or what really would you want to be able to do Honestly, I pretty much write everything that I want to write. <laughs> There's okay. no, oh, really? The All only right. thing that I think I would like to do that I'm not really great at yet is I would like to write like a really funny David Sedaris, Jenny Lawson style mm-hmm. memoir mm-hmm. top thing where I'm just like okay. writing about funny stuff that happens to me. Right. But um, I've tried and I don't really have the talent for it yet. Maybe if I work on it a little more, mm-hmm. I can get there, but um, not there yet. Okay. All right. So that's something you want to think about. Maybe it'll, uh, idea of popping your head and you start yeah. working on that. That's pretty cool though. I mean, it sounds like you got a lot of, uh, is all you do is write. I mean, are, yeah. you, are you have, Oh, why full time? Yeah. Right. Full time. Oh my goodness. I tried that and I couldn't, you know, I, I got not bored, but I'm like, oh, I gotta do something. <laughs> uh, I retired last August, a uh, year ago, last August, a year ago, last month, I guess. And, um, I did it for about six months. Well, I got to find something to do because, and then I want to write a children's book. Uh, oh, okay. Because some of these things that the kids say or do on the bus is absolutely hilarious. And how do you going to kind of get that into a story that I got the idea in my head, exactly what I want to do. How, I got the characters and everything. Mm-hmm. I just need to take the the time to go ahead and write it when I'm, when I'm not writing the other stuff. Uh, right. Did you you want to keep somewhat of a a cycle going, right? So you know the stuff's on the shelf for a while, then you have something new, and then you bring it out. Absolutely. So, what do you do from a marketing perspective? Because it, you know, as I was as guilty as everybody, I think every author ever was. I'm going to write a book, and everybody's going to buy it. <laughs> I'm not going to do anything. But it's not like that. You have to get your brand. Right. So how do you market or what do you do with along with your publisher to be able to folks to realize, know you and and, and want to get your books? Yeah, I that's a good question. I'm not great at marketing. I do my best. Like I'm doing stuff Mm -hmm. like this with, you know, I'm doing an interview. Hey, there you Um, go. (laughs) I do. um, I've done a few podcasts and things. Um, Mm -hmm. I do like book signings, um, have one coming up in October. Um, I'm going to be at the, where's it going to be at? Where's it going to be at? 
book carnival in Tustin on October 8th. What, where so, is that at? Um, it's, uh, the, it's in Tustin, California, Southern California. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. Uh, my, then, my grandparents lived in Fallbrook. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. My mom grew up in LA. So a long nice. time ago. Yeah. So you got that coming up. What else? Yeah. How else do you kind of um, market? I'm going to be at the, uh, Orange County Children's Book Festival, um, on October 1st. And I'm going to be promoting my kids' books. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I do things like that to kind of promote. And then like, I'll always post about it if I get an award or if I get some kind of, um, mm -hmm. you know, like a, a publishing deal or whatever, I always try and like post about it on social media just to let people know what's up. Um, but that's pretty much it. <laughs> huh. I mean, that's a, but that's a lot. I mean, a lot of, uh, a lot of authors aren't necessarily extroverts, right? Yeah. Uh, they're more, and they're not, and marketing is not their forte. Uh, it, I mean, you know, it could possibly be. So when I, when I started writing, I was like, man, I didn't know, I didn't know anything about it. Publishing right. business, zero. So I said, well, I'll start a podcast and I'll interview authors to, you know, from one, how do you write? When do you write? What do you write about? You know, why do you enjoy it? Or how do you market or the process? Have you ever been self-published or have you always been through a publisher? Um, I did self-publish a few things, uh, back in the day. Yes. Okay. So, you know, some people want to self-publish, somebody want to go with mm -hmm. a, a hybrid or traditional publisher. Um, and I didn't know any of that because people will take your money in a heartbeat. Oh yeah. Right. I mean, there's some, I've never, I didn't know there was that many people that would help me market a book until mm -hmm. I put out on LinkedIn that I wrote a book and mm -hmm. they are like, everybody's a book marketer. I'm like, please you know i yeah. know when i've got when i got my publisher i had to actually uh i wanted to go down to meet them they're, they're outside houston so i wanted to okay. like i need to i need to put my hands on you i need to look at you because it's a big deal right i mean you're giving right. yourself um uh, to the publisher so that's a that's that is a big deal and your publisher is out of uh new mexico yes. santa fe is that correct yes Santa I think Fe, New technically Mexico. they're a Japanese company, but the office I work with is in New Mexico. Okay, great, great. Yeah, so I, I, I kind of reached out to them on LinkedIn and said, hey, they, I said, you know, I'd like to interview your author. So I think I'm interviewing three or four of y'all oh, in okay. the next, uh, you know, three or four weeks. And, cool. and I do the same for my publisher. I interview the, all the authors. And I just interviewed uh, Kyle Mills, who, who does uh, writes <laughs> the Vince Flynn books. Oh, okay. uh, so I just inter interviewed him the other day and put out his his thing, but I, I enjoy it because I learn a lot from, you know, it's just not just hey, I'm going to review your book and you know tell you how great it is, even though I may, I may never have read it. Uh, so I, I think it's, it's getting to know the people. So does your daughter like to write? I mean, is she old enough where she is interested in maybe seeing what you're doing and kind of want to do it? Or say, hey, mom, look, at, mom, look at this, look what I did, yay. She goes back and forth. It's really strange. Sometimes she loves writing and she'll mm -hmm. write, she'll sit down at home and write like whole books and they're really fascinating and interesting and bizarre. But then at school, she says she doesn't like to write. <laughs> she doesn't want the grade. <laughs> yeah. It's so, it's, it's interesting. Um, I don't know what, we'll see if she likes writing when she gets older or not. Uh huh. I didn't, I didn't write any, well, I wrote like, I think one short story in high school. I got a pretty good grade on it, okay. but I, mean, I didn't really pick up reading until I joined the army because you got to read I mean, you got to read manuals and stuff. So I, yeah. I did that. Then I didn't, then I just had an idea about a year and a half ago, ran, ran the, uh, the idea by a good friend of mine. And he said, man, that'd be a good book. So I, I sat down and wrote it in six weeks. Nice. Yeah. Uh, so that, that, I mean, that's interesting. So do you, do you write like uh, any articles or do you write for magazines or anything or just mainly the, the publications? I do a lot of um, preview articles for local theater, um, for the Orange okay. County Theaters Guild. Uh, they have me write um, kind of like promotional articles for mm -hmm. different plays that are coming up. Mm -hmm. But that's really it. I don't really do a lot of nonfiction. Um, yeah, it's just kind of not my thing. It's not bad. It just. Right. Yeah. So do you, so you wrote about Athena, right? Mm -hmm. and the, uh, I think uh, Roman God, is that, or is it uh, uh, Greek? Greek? Greek yeah. god, Greek goddess. Yes. Uh, so, do you like research for that? I mean, do you like you want to know some uh, something about her to be able to put the books and mannerisms that are you know in the books that have been written about her or the fables or the mythology about her? 
Yeah, I did a little research on it. Um, I, I probably should have done a lot more, but I, I didn't want it to really dictate the story too much. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I got kind of the, um, the basics of her, what she was the goddess of, what her, you know, skills were like some of mm -hmm. the, main stories that she was involved in but um i didn't do a real deep dive on it but um but i think i did enough to where i did a passable excellent story yeah. about what athena would be like in an 11 year old girl body yeah i mean i i mean the temple of athena i think there's a temple of athena in uh in greece or was or is or oh yeah that's, I'm sure. that's interesting i mean uh, to go back to the method uh, methodology uh, and start talking about a, a princess and putting her in today, right? Like mm -hmm. she's got to be like, my goodness, things have changed. <laughs> yeah, you know, especially if she can rec recollect when she was back in right. whatever AD, right? I mean, that was a long, long time ago. Mm -hmm. So that that's very interesting. So you got you got your book. Uh, you do some promotions mm -hmm. that you, with your book. Uh, do you go any like conferences or are there conferences you can go to there? I find these all the time now that there's conferences for thrillers. There's conferences for mystery yeah. books and you can go to these. I didn't know about them, uh, but now I do. So I'm like, do I go, do I invest the money to be able to do that, to mingle, to be able to get the word out? Mm -hmm. I mean, have you thought about any of those or? Oh yeah. I know you're going to do that one in for Orange County. Right. So that's the children's thing. Um, I'm also, I'm a member of the Horror Writers Association. Um, and they do uh, StokerCon every year. So that's a great one. Um, I like StokerCon. They've got a lot of good workshops, a lot of good, um, interesting people for there. horror books? Yeah, for horror. Because that's really? mostly what I write. I'm, I keep on talking about my kids' books. But honestly, mostly I'm a horror writer. <laughs> I was talking um, about that. I'm interested in that. So, uh, so uh, The Cannibal's Guide to Fasting is my novel that's out. Cannibal Guide to um, Fasting. Yeah. So that's, um, it's a kind of a dystopian comedy horror Mm -hmm. So it's about a guy named Igor, and he is a gigantic bodybuilder with a tattoo on his face, and he's been infected with uh, this virus that's turned him into a cannibal. And so basically there's a virus going around that turns people into, like, perfectly normal people, but they just have this insatiable craving for human flesh. Mm -hmm. However, he's also a scientific genius, Um he was disgraced from his lab because after he got infected, he started snacking on some of the cadavers. And so snacking. Um, yeah. You know, he couldn't control himself and it was better than, you know, a live person. Right. So anyway, so that, he gives Funyuns a whole new, <laughs> right. a whole new idea about Funyuns. Um, yeah. So all these people who are infected are kind of rounded up by the government and forced to live in these containment centers. Um, social workers come and check on them, make sure they're not eating people, that they're obeying all these rules and such. They don't eat each other? Like, take a well, nibble here and there? <laughs> that, that, kind of. So um, <laughs> he finds out that his brother has started, his, who's also infected, his brother uh, started a cannibal rights group. Basically, their idea is that, um, you know, their lifestyle isn't their fault. It's something that, you know, they're infected with. And they've started basically feeding on each other. And they're like, as long as it's consensual, I don't see why anyone should have a problem with it. So that's kind well, of like this. Go, I am four years old. Oh, hold on yeah. a second. Not... So, yeah, they'll <laughs> donate a finger. They'll donate a toe, you know. And so um, at first, Igor thinks this is kind of weird, but whatever. Yeah. But then he finds out that that's not what they're doing. They're actually kidnapping homeless children and eating them. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. So Igor has to intervene and take down the cannibal rights cult. And um, that's kind of the story of it. It's kind of a brother versus brother thing. There's also a romance. He kind of has a romance with his social worker. And um, yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I bet when they're dating and the guy goes, well, you smell really good. That has a whole new meaning now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not not as romantic, is it? No, like, that would take no. like, hmm. Is that is that maple? Is it, what does that smell? <laughs> you smell like cupcakes. Yeah. <laughs> so, how, how many have you written of that? Those, those type of books. How many horror books have you written? Um, several. This is the um, this is probably the this is the only one from Cinnabar Moth, mm -hmm. and then I've written some horror screenplays and stage plays as well. Um, yeah. So I. I mostly like to dabble in horror, but for right now I'm focusing on my kids' books just because um, that's what's There's a market for it. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah, there's a market for it. I know my uh, my nephew a few years ago, he said, oh, he said, Uncle Travis, I'm going to write a screenplay or a 
for a book, for a movie, right? Mm -hmm. I go, okay, you know, you hear this all the time. I say, well, great. So when you, when you're done, I'll give you the money to make the movie. Nice. A couple years go by, never hear nothing about it. Called me one day, says, Uncle Travis, I'm done. So it's, it, wasn't a, it was a short film, 30 minutes short. And so I, we had dinner with him, my wife and him at the time and his wife. And I brought a big old check, like a golf check, you know, <laughs> so I put on <laughs> how much, how much I'd given him. So I gave him the Thanks. money to produce the movie. And, uh, so it was kind of neat. It was it's really good. It's called, uh, yield, right? It's called yield. And it's a really good short story, but I remember, you know, going and, oh, you know, they pay for the movie. So they treat, I mean, they treat you really nice when you're like yeah. the executive producer. Right. And then kind of, now I have an IMDB page. Nice. So now I have all the, and I have points mm -hmm. for, you know, that. And so I'm like, Oh, that's kind of cool. Uh, but it was really interesting. And I've, I've wanted to get one of my books in uh, screen, uh, mm -hmm. screen written, whatever, you know, for a movie. Yeah. And I, I looked at it, but because there's a lot of dialogue there, but you know, it's there, but I'm like, Hmm, that's something else I'd have to learn. And I don't know if I want yeah. to be able to do that. I've but done yeah, that for cool. some people. I've adapted their books into screenplays. It's, it's yeah. a, it's a skill. It's fun. I actually enjoy that. Yeah. And I like, I like the, you know, the, you go, what do I do a treatment or something? Then, you know, you, cause I don't know anybody in LA. I mean, I, <laughs> I used to, but not anymore. A long yeah. Time ago. I did meet Nikki Six on the airplane and sat oh, cool. next to him for uh, almost two hours. Very, very nice guy. Very nice guy. The tattoos were like, whoa, but really nice guy. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so you're, you're going to concentrate on your, on your children's books, mm -hmm. but you always got that. And the mic back there, like hmm, dystopian horror kind of yeah. uh, thought process. You got to try to keep out of your ch kids' books. Yes, and sometimes it in. tries to sneak in. It, it does. does try to creep in. It does. Like my um for my second book, my publisher uh got back to me and they're like, um, some of this isn't appropriate for children. <laughs> and I'm like, what? What are you talking about? It was fine. And so I went back through it and I found what he's like, and I'm like, oh right. Oh. Yeah, actually that's probably not good for kids. So I had to you know, like Yeah, of course. Yeah, how do you how do you, how do you how do you say it without Right. Being adultish. Right. Keep More it, of a kid. Keep it kid friendly. Thing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. A kid's meal. So, yeah. you know, it's really adult meal in a box. I a had a thing where, um, you know, Dionysus was having like a big drunken party and they were doing a knife fight or something like that. And, he, and yeah. the was like, no, no, you can't well, have it. And yeah, I'm like, probably. Okay. So I instead of having him bring like a traveling circus into the house or something like that, I figure that's kid friendly and they'll also yeah. understand why that's over the top and you don't necessarily want to bunch of wild animals in the house i'm like that works so but they, but it does creep in there you're yeah, you're, every, you're you're back here somewhere is creeps forward when you're writing like uh oh yeah. <laughs> i have to consciously restrain <laughs> but, but hey there's there could be good horror kids books i mean there are look at harry potter was not horror but it was a lot of fancy but they got darker as the kids aged right yes definitely that series got darker uh as it as it went I wrote a very dark kids book called Wolf in the Woods, um, but everyone kind of hates it. So um, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Maybe I'll get it published someday. But what do they know? It's very kid friendly. Like there's nothing yeah. in it that's like you know sexual or crazy violent mm. or whatever. Right. But um, yeah, we'll. No one wants to publish it. We'll see though. Ah, uh, you never know. We'll see. Hit a nerve out there with somebody goes. Ah, oh, I like that. I like somebody might much. like it someday. But I so like. So where can where can everybody get a hold of you? Uh, where can they buy your books? I mean, you know, Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever. Yeah, so TikTok, I whatever. am on Facebook. You can find me on there, uh, Dana Hammer author page. Um, I'm not real active on social media, um, mm -hmm. but I technically have an Instagram page. I think I'm on there three times a year or something like that. But if you send me a message, so it's on not it, really Instagram. Then <laughs> no, I mean, it, it's technically there, but yeah. no, but if you, um, if you message me on Facebook or Instagram, I will try and get back to you. Um, you can find my stuff anywhere. Books are sold, Amazon, Target, Barnes and okay. Noble, wherever. Um, and yeah, I hope you like my books, everybody out there. Yeah, so are you on Twitter or anything? Or you don't do Twitter? No, I hate Twitter so much. Yeah, I'm not a big... Uh, you know what? It's necessarily evil. I just try to 
not pay much attention no. to it. I know I should. Uh, I know I should. I mean, uh, yeah, it's, it's big on the Insta thing. So it was great. I mean, you got anything else you want to tell the folks about your books? And or, I know you've won some awards too. Oh right? yeah. yeah, yeah. So you've you've been uh, been busy. Yeah, <laughs> I'm very busy. <laughs> Well, excellent. Dana, it's been great meeting you, and I hope folks go out and check her books out. And what's the name of your publisher again? Cinnabar Moth. Cinnabar Moth. And the book that uh, just came out is? Uh, the most recent one is called My Best Friend Athena, and the next one that's coming out is called Fanny Fitzpatrick and the Brother Problem. Excellent. Excellent. Well, it was a pleasure meeting you today, and have fun in Southern California because it never rains. That's true. Uh, I know. So. <laughs> we just had a hurricane, though, so. That was kind of odd. That yeah. that was that, it was, that was peculiar. <laughs> that was peculiar, but that was great. So meeting your folks, go check out her books, and uh, she's got whether you got kids or you like to read a good horror book, then check her out. She's got something back there brewing. Guarantee it. Well, it was great. Thank meeting you. you.